In this video, we'll be doing the classic game's camera switch. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hi everyone, this is Omar Bafaki. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. If not, welcome to this channel where we create game development tutorials and from time to time, I upload my short films. In the last tutorial, we've done a simple introduction to Cinemachine. In this video, as promised, we will be using clear shots. So basically, clear shots is a Cinemachine component that switches between cameras whenever it has a better view of the player. This style of camera switching has been seen in many games like the classic Resident Evil or um, God of War. This is a demo of what we'll be doing by the end of the video. As you can see, the camera switches when we move and all of this has been done automatically with Cinemachine. And now let's start. At first, we're gonna start with this empty scene just to explain clear shots in a very basic way and uh, to explain the components and parameters that we will be modifying. Here, basically, we've just got a simple scene and no cameras created yet. The first step is to go to Cinemachine and then create clear shot camera. And if you don't see Cinemachine here, that means you haven't installed it yet. To install it, you use the package manager. And to see how, you can check the previous tutorial where we covered that with the introduction to Cinemachine. All right, as you can see, when we create clear shot, first thing it did, it added a Cinemachine brain. Then it created two objects. One Cinemachine clear shot, which just has the um, Cinemachine clear shot component. Then we have a simple virtual cam and also it has a Cinemachine Collider. And before explaining anything, let's just create another camera. To do so, you simply duplicate it. This is one way, Control D or Command D on Mac, or simply you can go to the clear shot component and just click on the add button here. And there you go, we have another camera now. Let's start positioning them. We can either drag them and position them to the view that we want, or a better solution, we can use this shortcut, Control shift f or Command shift f to align with view. Select the other camera. Uh, we don't know what's the view of that camera. To check the view, we just enable solo in status here. And let's just place it here. You can go to game object and then align with view. And here we have it. So just disable solo again. And we've got two cameras now. If you start playing, nothing would happen. Even if we get out of frame, it won't switch to the other camera. Why? Well, because technically we haven't enabled that yet because we haven't set the target. And to do that, we simply drag the player to look at. And now we've got the two cameras looking at the player. And we don't want the cameras to look at the player. We just want them to be fixed cameras. We will just go to each of these virtual cams, scroll down to aim, and we're gonna switch it from composer to do nothing. So it won't look at the player. And we do the same for the other camera. Now, if we hit play, we've got the two cameras here. So I'm gonna go to the far left and exit that frame to see if it's gonna switch to the other camera. And, uh, yeah, but it takes a bit of time, I think. So we've technically left the frame and we're behind the camera, but it hasn't switched to the other one. Why? Well, um, probably because it detects the player as an obstacle, but we wanted to ignore the uh, player's collider. To do that, we will go to each of these cameras and go down to the Cinemachine Collider and then ignore tag, player. Select the other one and we'll do the same. And you have to make sure that your player is actually assigned to the player tag. Okay, so let's test it out. I'm just gonna try to leave the frame. And there you have it. It just instantly changed from one to the other. But there is a bit of an issue here. It won't switch back to the other camera until it gets triggered by leaving the frame. So if I leave that frame, it will go to that one. But what if I'm back again to that frame? It should switch back to the other one because I'm closer to it and it has a better shot of the player. To do that, 
if you go to Cinema Scene Collider, we will see Shot Evaluation and it has an optimal target distance. So by default, once it's zero, it is deactivated. Once it's more than zero, a higher score will be given to the shot when the target is closer to this distance. So let's say two. So when the player is within two units away, it will switch to that camera. Okay, and for the other camera, let's just say once it's one unit away and just hit play. You will see that once we're just almost a unit away, it will switch to that one. And now we're almost two units away, so it switches back to this one. And the cool thing about it is that once you're out of frame, it goes to the other one. And once you're back in frame, it switches to the uh, closer camera. And you can play with these parameters until you find the results that you want. And one more thing. So let's say you've got an obstacle. All right. If I just hit play. And let's just cover the camera. You will see that it switches to the other one. And the same once I block the other one. You have to make sure that the uh, obstacle has a collider. If I just disable that collider and completely block the camera, nothing would happen. And another thing as well, the collider shouldn't be trigger. It has to be a non-trigger collider. So if it is trigger and I just try to block the camera, nothing would happen. So it has to be a collider that is not a trigger. One more cool thing, if we select our clear shot component here, you will see there is a default blend. What we have at the moment is just cut. So we just straight cut from one camera to another whenever we switch. We can use any of these options. Uh, so if you choose is and out, you will see a new parameter shows up, which is in seconds. And that's the speed or time in how many seconds you want to switch from one camera to another. So let's just put it two. And if we hit play now and try to exit the frame, you'll see that it switches to the other camera within two seconds. And now let's apply whatever we've learned here into an actual scene. And before we start, you can get this super cool free environment from the asset store. And I'll be using it for the upcoming tutorials. I'll have more Cinemachine, Timeline, and Cutscenes tutorial. Let me know if you're excited about it. And let's get started. Select the player and then press F to focus. So we're just near the player. And now let's just start the setup of the cameras. First thing first, we're going to create a new clear shot camera. And before we do anything, there is something cool, especially if you've got a background in filming or lenses in general. You can switch the camera to physical camera here. And you can select the sensor that you want. And you can see that it's a hybrid approach. You, you'll see the focal length here and the field of view. And now you cannot modify that because we've got a virtual cam. So to change that, we'll go to our virtual camera and just play around with it. Now it's 8 mm. Let's just change it to 15. And we're going to position it somewhere here, a bit on the top. And to align it with view, Control Shift F or Command Shift F. Slightly down. Okay, cool. And before we create the other cameras, let's just assign the player to um, look at. But as you can see, by default, it looks at the player center, which is just here. We want it to look at the player's head. Not for this shot, um, but for the other shots. So select the neck, I'll select again the clear shot and assign neck to the look at variable here. So now it's just looking at the head of the player and we're going to come here and just disable the aim. We don't want it to look at the player for this specific shot. We can just ignore the player and let's create another camera. We select our clear shot here, just plus. It's still in the same view. And to make sure that we're looking through that camera, we're just gonna enable solo from here. All right. And let's just place it somewhere here on top of the stairs. And Command Shift F or Control Shift F. And we're just gonna ignore the player tag. Let's just say we want this frame to be um, wider. So just change it to 10, the focal length. And now we're gonna create another one which will be on top so uh, enable solo and we don't want it to aim so just do nothing the player comes from the stairs and we want the camera to be somewhere here 
So control shift F. This time we want it to be extremely wide. Something around eight and just ignore the player tag. So if we hit play now and test it out, okay, you can see that it's switching between the cameras smoothly. That is super cool. But there's one more thing to it. As you recall in the video that I showed in the beginning, there was a handshake movement. To do that, select the first camera and then you can add noise. So at the moment it's assigned to none. Okay, let's assign basic multi-channel Perlin. And then it has no noise profile. Select the uh, handheld wide angle mild. As you can see, it has a super cool handshake effect. Okay, so we've got amplitude and frequency. Amplitude is basically how far would the camera go. So if we just increase it, it will have more space to move around. So now it looks like um, the player is on a cruise or a ship. So put it back to one. And then frequency is how frequent um, the noise would happen. So the more you increase it, it will be more intense and rough. So there are a lot of movements. So let's just put it back to one. Hit play and see what we've got so far. Okay, so that's it pretty much for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful and uh, helpful. Let me know if you got any suggestions or comments. And if you got any questions about Cinemachine, just ask them in the comments below. And hopefully I'll answer them in the comments or in the next video. This is Omar Bafiki. Thank you so much for watching and see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.